Thank you very much. Um, my name is Lyra Cosme. Uh, I will be talking about um, some lessons learned and uh, experience from industry and academia around how to successfully deploy your models um, um, in, in production. Um, I have a background in computational biology and medical informatics and have been in roles as big data engineer, data architect, and, um, and uh, in computer vision and enterprise data and machine learning uh, platform engineering uh, currently. So I, I, what I will share today is, uh, is a framework on how to think about model build and deployment and what are the caveats and um, artifacts and checkpoints to assess uh, the feasibility of your model, uh, when to make that decision to move it into production, and how to accelerate that path to production uh, and make sure that we are kind of adding checks and balances for our team. Uh, what happens often in industry uh, is uh, definitely a lot of push from leadership these days on adopting more and more AI ML into business workflows and optimizing and augmenting. Um, there may be some funding aligned to it, but really if we don't do the due diligence at the right time, we are going to see, uh, you know, there's a high rate of failure uh, in implementation to deployment. So I will be sharing a little bit about my, my experience and um, some, some tips and tricks and a framework. I'm an engineer uh, by background, so I like to think of this as a, as a framework or some steps uh, or, or a method that I can use to make sure that I'm using my very expensive uh, resources, data scientists, data engineers in the most productive way and are I'm also setting them up for success. So starting off, um, I want to just uh, sh sh share that um, uh, all thoughts are my own and uh, they don't represent any of my employers. So going from there, uh, the way I think about these things is in two phases. Uh, model deployment um, can be broken up into two phases. One is just really thinking about the initial phase where you're thinking about what the model is, what is the business problem you're trying to solve, um, uh, what, it, what are the metrics? What is your vision? Uh, two, five month plan versus three, four, five year plan or vision around the problem that you're trying to solve or the business or impact or change that you're trying to enforce uh, through model or AI or model development. And then think a little bit about that initial phase where you are able to experiment and design, uh, do the feasibility assessment. And then during that experimentation phase, uh, there is a there is a there is um, a time where you are able to understand whether you have the ROI, whether you have the scale, whether you have the data to 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 move into production. And once that criteria is is well defined, you can start to think about a, a deployment of one of your candidate solutions or options around that AI or ML solution. And then I'll talk a little bit about uh, just wrap it up with with summary of what we are what we, we talk about today. So thinking about model development life cycle, uh, I like to think about model development, deployment, productionalization, operationalization uh, as as an iterative process. This is a very well known uh, Chris DM model, right? Really, uh, what what needs to happen is that the business, the data engineers, the data scientists have to start to think about what we're building, whether the scale is there, uh, and then have the data science rigor applied to it. And then also starting to think about how it's going to be deployed, who's going to adopt it, and then bake in the change management that's going to be uh, coming as part of your AI uh, deployment. So I will talk a little bit about these uh, uh, these operational uh, mechanisms as part of this life cycle. Uh, really, when you're building a model, you're trying to, um, you know, when you start with the business problem, trying to understand, is it an augmentation problem? Are you trying to optimize um, some uh, performance? Are you trying to reduce the work? Are you trying to reduce some costs for business? Really trying to understand what the business goals are. So this is your ideation and concept development phase. 
Uh, and then that really helps you understand what the impact is uh, impact is for your uh, business, right? What is the what is the problem that you're trying to understand to solve? Um, oftentimes, uh, what what happens is that you are too much in a rush to get into a model build and deployment, and really uh, don't understand whether there is enough ROI, and then uh, really not having the right expectation or um, assessment done at in this early stage where you could you could be learning and failing fast instead of trying to push through into production and then really making uh, a very late call when you know you've made huge investments and then uh, a lot of time and effort going into these um, products or assets and then really not getting the the business impact that you you initially expected so um, <clears throat> also, as you're uh, as you're implementing your AI and ML algorithms, um, really uh, for any industry, especially in the in the healthcare, in the financial industry, where audit and compliance and security um, um, checks and balances have to be put in place, you really have to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're able to first. Reproduce your work, right? Uh, you build a model. You want to um, respond to changing business. Uh, we have seen that happen in the last few years. Uh, scale of the problem changes, the customer profile changes, the volumes change for your business, and your business is growing or evolving or shrinking. And you have to be able to build and re re rebuild or refresh or retrain that model, and be able to reproduce um, those results from development into production environment. Also, explainability is becoming a big topic. You need to be able to explain the decisions that your model is making. If it's a classification model, for example, and you're making a decision around how, um, how um, maybe a customer, why, why a customer falls in, into a bucket, and you're making the, some decisions around that customer segmentation. You really need to be able to explain why that happened, and it's going getting uh, getting more and more attention as we are getting more and more adoption of AI and ML. And similarly, you want to make sure your data sample model itself is unbiased against you know standard you know um, social determinants of health, race, gender, ethnicity, and and so on. If they are your model is assessing. And making decisions around um, around those those criteria. Uh, also, as we are processing any data, we may have PAI, PI, PII, PHI, or security concerns. So, how do you make sure that your model that you're building and deploying the data is still secure? The model is making decisions, and you know it's deployed in a way that it's secure and th there's no infiltration in terms of. Uh, um, in, uh, of some of a bad agent coming in and help kind of uh, make uh, making some sort of changes to your uh, deployment. Also, reliability with business uh, as you're building your model, what you are building, you want the business on the table early on to make sure that um, what your understanding of their business problem is the same, and then the solution that you build really fits that problem, and it it, it is a, it is like a trust and a reliability um, uh, concern with with your business. So I want to start to uh, to talk a little bit about model deployment and oper operationalization in terms of this business process, the team structure, uh, and then kind of start to think about the technology stack that goes with it. So uh, going a little bit deeper into the experimentation and design phase, um, really uh, the first step is really when you're sitting with business, trying to understand impact, uh, understand uh, what we're trying to solve for, right? Really, it's an optimization problem. Are you trying to optimize costs? Are you trying to reduce the number of resources working on something? Are you trying to make your resources more efficient? Or are you trying to reduce time to do certain topics or uh, certain things? Or are you trying to remove some of the repetitive work from your workforce and automate that through AI ML and, um, and may have your experts make some, some of the more complex decisions? So really understanding what the business problem is um, and how, how to, uh, you know, what, what the, the business goal is. And then really 
what happens is that um, any any deployment, it, it is more of a change management and uh, literacy, um, a change management a problem because anything, whenever you're deploying an AI or ML model, even if it's for optimizing and helping your workforce or helping uh, any decision making, unless there it's it's followed up uh, or it's 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 managed through change management or liter or uh, training up your resources, your business partners, you you are not going to be able to deploy it and understand the the outcomes of your model uh, unless you set 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 that up in the right way. And also, um, what happens is a lot of times, um, um, there, people tend to overestimate what the model can do. Uh, so for example, um, uh, a, 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 for example, um, people, people can think about AI in, in a very abstract way or a business can understand that uh, it can do very complex tasks, but re in reality, it may need to be broken down into smaller tasks or starting to think about the, the depth of the problem. For example, if I have, uh, um, if I have, uh, for example, a use case around uh, assessing damage on some, uh, for my car, and I want to be able to build a system where it can identify the parts and estimate, give me an estimate of what it's what it needs to be repaired. It's a complex prob problem. It needs to stitch together several layers of uh, complexity in terms of identifying in the image, there's a car, which parts, and then kind of uh, linking together the, the components uh, around um, cost and availability and so on. So really setting that expectation with business, bringing the literacy of the, of the business problem having your data scientists and data engineers really understand the problem itself, the business problem, understand the impact, understand the ROI and success criteria. And then on the other side, have the business expect, uh, understand the limitations of algorithms or the limitations that are around the data availability or the cost, right? So sometimes that feasibility assessment is really important and ROI, when we say ROI, it could be cost related, it could be time related, it could be uh, related to um, just the scale of the problem, right? You may be a so solving a problem that's not large enough to be solved. For example, if you think you're going to create a system and uh, you know for claim handling, and you're you know you're you're handling uh, making a decision around a very very specific population, you may not have enough claims or enough volume or the data at the, at the brain that you need. So uh, even when you build a successful AI system that does the right thing or makes the right decision, you may be only uh, addressing a small population or not enough uh, about providing enough value to, to, the, to the business. For example, um, is your algorithm making a very complex decision, which is only like made once in a quarter or once in a day, but it's making decisions around something that will cost your business maybe hundreds or thousands of dollars versus, versus making very small decisions that impact, um, you know, that are not very high value, but you're making many, many, many of those decisions so they can impact your bottom line. So really understanding um, the complexity of the problem, understanding the value and the, assess the feasibility of the problem, the ROI of the problem, is really where your this phase is, um, is geared towards. Really think hard about what you're trying to solve, what your goal is short-term, long-term, and bring the teams together, uh, data engineers, data scientists, as well as business. Uh, even if you're not including all of the operational teams at this point, having the leadership represented in those areas is very valuable so that you can at least try to, um, uh, to scope out the work in the right way so that you're setting your team up for success. Uh, going into a little bit deeper on experimentation and design, um, I, I alluded to that a little bit before as well. Really, uh, first step is for all of the team members to understand the, the, the business process uh, very well, try to understand what, what is the problem you're trying to solve, the complexity of it, how does it impact the users who are going to use the system? Is there training and 
change management that needs to be put in place. Uh, really articulate the inefficiencies, uh, problems, and what which problems are going to be addressed by your solution and which problems will still remain. So want to make sure that you set the right expectation, what's going to be solved or not. And then often what happens is that even when you have a very good idea uh, and you think it's going to be uh, impactful, once you start to look at the data, you may not be mature as an organization. Uh, either the data is not captured at the right level or the, the, capture, the data processes are not mature where you're not able to connect to the lineage because if you're building a model from a data warehouse, for example, and then you're deploying model in production, there's a gap, you're not able to uh, get to the lineage of data, really trying to, the maturity is not there, so you're going to make uh, build something that is not deployable in production. Really also, if the data is available, is the access an issue? Can you get samples versus the whole data? And then really start to think about the integration, right? Is the <clears throat> is this model getting deployed on a back end in some batch process? And then this uh, gets fed into some front end application through some data transfer of like a file versus you're building uh, an operational database where the data gets uh, put it into an uh, uh, put it into a database that the application uses versus some API that the application uses. So really understanding where you're going to get the data for testing and building, as well as for deployment, and then really understanding who who needs to be brought in, right? So if you are building a system, um, leadership uh, may from that area may help you understand from a broader vision, but really bringing in people from the field who will be using the system, just starting to bring them along on the journey, explaining to them and understanding from them how their workflow may be different, right? Or do they have to click on specific things to get to that? Uh, you know, for example, if it's an email system where you're, it's a claim, claim handler or a person who answers emails, uh, would it help for them to have emails bucketed into some some categories in terms of priority or maybe related to some uh, uh, the dollar amount or something like that. So really understanding how their day-to-day -day would change, would it add or take away from their time or performance? And so really understanding and educating your, your users as well as learning from them. And then really also trying to kind of figure out the task complexity, right? What does the algorithm solve and what does it not solve? Um, do you have to build one algorithm or a suite of algorithms to solve your problem? Are there any other business rules that are available to you to make that assessment to reduce the complexity of the algorithms? Oftentimes you, oftentimes you will find that the, there is a way to filter your population in a way that uh, reduces the complexity of your algorithm. And then you, you should be able to stack um, the deployment in a way that you have some rules, business rules, and then you have a, a single model or a suite of models, and then some further business rules applied to the results that may be very valuable uh, as, as a suite of uh, processes. Also, um, it's really important to set that expectation around batch or real time. Often, business will ask for real time, and you really don't need real time. What uh, and the difference often is about ten times uh, in terms of cost and effort that goes into it. So, a batch process. Thinking about often, what I find is that real, near real time is enough for model deployment. So, really having a conversation is the real time model deployment essential versus running the model in a, in a backend process, still feeding the front end application, but the data could be refreshed maybe in a micro batch or a batch process. So really understanding the level of automation or the SLA or the degree of, uh, uh, degree of um, uh, usage of that model uh, or, or the deployment uh, method is important. Otherwise, a bucket kind of um, here that covers business ROI, scale, performance, and kind of really understanding whether <clears throat> whether what you're building is in, is uh, is good enough or not. So, as I I kind of alluded to, you know, as you're thinking about operationalizing your models, 
the first phase, the end of this phase, it's almost like a pull the plug phase where you you kind of think you have a few can you understand the business problem, you have assessed a few different types of models, some rule based systems, some more complex algorithms, maybe regression or neural networks and things and so on, you know, more complex algorithms, maybe requiring more uh, infrastructure, hardware and costing have some cost implications for your business. Uh, or maybe even uh, some implications around explainability and so on. So, uh, so really uh, having that conversation at the end of this experimentation phase, it's not to say that you haven't built anything. You have built a few candidate models. You understand what the data, uh, data entails uh, and then uh, assess the, the, the quality of your model. And at this point, I think it's, it's, you know, it's a good, good checkpoint or a time to assess whether you should move forward with deployment or not. Um, and I, I don't think pulling the plug on a model here is a failure. You know, at least you've done some experimentation, you had an idea, and it's actually a very, very good time to assess whether uh, you should go forward with deploying this algorithm or this algorithm is better just not deployed because it's not providing the value to the customer or the user in the way that you initially thought so it's a it's an experimentation phase um uh, at the end of this experimentation phase if you have assessed that it is giving you enough roi it, the level of automation and the data and all of these things align and then you're ready to put into production uh what helps is uh is the engineering rigor uh, you will hear a lot about data ops, DevOps, ML ops, AI ops, and all of, all of that is is um, uh, the engineering um, rigor uh, that goes into building systems that make them reliable, scalable, and re reproducible. So all of this will help enhance your uh, you know enhance your ability to move from development to production. And a lot of this may or may not be in your control. It depends on your enterprise or organizational maturity around these practices. But if these things are set up in the right way, they provide you an acceleration to move from your development environment into production environment and so on. So uh, really going into the implementation phase, uh, you should go into this phase uh, You know, once your assessment is done that yes, it's feasible, I want to move on. And um, what goes, you know, uh, there are a couple of considerations here that you should be thinking about, right? Um, oftentimes, uh, thinking about whether your data is on prem, whether your model needs to be deployed on prem or on the cloud. Um, these are things maybe they're not in your control, uh, but they, they do make an impact. Thinking about infrastructure, a lot of cloud providers are now coming up with uh, managed notebooks or development environments. And then also offering the the deployment or you know real time and batch deployment capabilities. Um, a lot of cloud providers are already doing that. So thinking about whether you're going to manage the infrastructure there or you're going to leverage some of the cloud provided providers uh, uh, platform. Another thing that goes into consideration is the data access when we are building a model from a data warehouse and putting in production uh, and we um, we have to get the data in some through some API or really understanding how the data is going to be available to me in production. So really having the development environment that allows you to do that and that move from development to production is reduced uh, in terms of the time and the effort. <laughs> Uh, also, what you may be uh, conserving, considering at this point is uh, how your data um, is changing over time. So that's becoming another important consideration as we're operationalizing models. Business changes, uh, things change, uh, data changes, your population changes. So nothing is static. And I think you really have to start to put some observability and tracking of your data in to your model. Uh, the data out of your model, the predictions that the, your model is making, so that you can start to have uh, um, have some ability to uh, monitor the decisions that your model is making and to continue to assess for your business that this model is still relevant. 
and maybe set up some rules around when when certain changes happen, trigger a retraining activity or trigger um, um, trigger uh, uh, you know uh, some sort of um, ceiling or rules that will allow you to make sure that your model is still making decisions that are relevant for your business. One thing that you can build in your system that is going to be really essential is that feedback loop if there, there, there is a possibility. For example, if it is a model that uh, you are deploying and there's possibility for you to capture the decision that someone makes. So if, if it's an augmentation workflow, where your model made a recommend, recommendation to the user. So maybe it's a workflow where uh, it's a recommendation system for, um, for a physician to do something specific and whether they, um, whether they follow that advice or not, if there's a way for you to capture that feedback, that's essential. And I mean, this is going to be critical. If you are starting a project or if your organization is starting to think about AI, ML, build, deployment, um, the first thing you can do is start to add logging mechanisms or feedback mechanisms into your front end application so that uh, a year or two down the road, your, your data scientists have enough data or history to build a model. So feedback loop is important for getting, uh, for assessing the model quality and kind of really uh, refreshing and retraining as needed as well as also uh, providing that initial set of data that your data scientists may need. If, if you have been doing that, that's really setting yourself uh, uh, for success. Also, uh, not all models have to be uh, changing over time. Or they don't change over time, right? Sometimes you have a model that doesn't change. You don't have to refresh um, maybe uh, for a whole year. Some models that are making decisions on data that's changing every day, you may have to refresh and redeploy that model you know, every day. So really understanding what is the refresh cycle of the data or and then how often should I be refreshing and redeploying and reassessing the quality of my model and then uh, putting it into production, what is that, that process? So really to wrap it up, um, what I would say is that um, model operationalization is a uh, a team sport where your business, your data scientists, your engineers have to come together. And even after you've deployed your model, uh, the work is not done. Uh, you have to continuously monitor and make sure what the problem you're solving, the technology, the model itself continues to provide that business value or it is serving the purpose that it was initially built for. Uh, and I think of it as in four phases, right? Uh, when you build a model, you do the feasibility assessment, make sure what you're building um, is, is uh, the right type of model, it addresses the problem, it is uh, capturing some metrics or it's optimizing some business metrics that you need, um, and then come up with a couple of solution options and have some approval process on how that gets deployed. Maybe it's a, uh, it's some rule-based system where you have to work with bus business to understand the thresholds that they may be setting, what is the tolerance right, for business to have the false positives or false negatives and so on, and having that um, cadence with them. And then really also doing the change management piece where you are educating your users on how to use the system, how to understand the outcomes of the algorithm, and really educating your business users on the on how the, the model is making the decision and how to override or understand or uh, interpret that. So that's uh, that's it for me. Uh, from my perspective, uh, model operationalization starts from early on, um, from the business problem understanding. Uh, and if you're following some of these engineering principles that we are outlining, really you're setting us, yourself up for reproducible, explainable, secure and reliable data science. Thank you.